to his life. And uh, we're grateful as a family and that you're here as family and friends. And we praise God for you today. As we move forward into our service, uh, we have now a selection by Reverend Jonathan Higgins. Is Jonathan Higgins here? Thank you. 
Higgins. As we move forward into the um, heart of our program, we're right now at the place of scripture reading. And I am going to read, actually, I've just read it, but today's message is going to come out of the book of, out of Psalm and the 23rd chapter. So I'm going to read that again. And I'm going to preach it later on, so I'm going to read it again. And uh, I think it's such an appropriate song. Psalm 23. I think we all know this one. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still, quiet, and peaceful waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of a righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, and even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff comforts me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. <coughs> Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Pray with me. Father God, as we come before you, God, with our hearts heavy, our minds confused, we thank you, God, that there is hope, oh God, even now. We thank you, God, for providing us the comfort and the strength that we need, God, right now. Lord, we pray, Father, for this part of the service that, Lord, it will bring honor and glory to your name as we, oh God, lift up your servant before you. And thank you, God, for the time that we have with each other at this moment. We pray for your anointing to be upon us, to break every yoke and destroy every form of bondage. We thank you, Lord God, for the liberty and the freedom, God, to walk in what you've provided for us even on today. Father, we understand that we can only take one step at a time in this life. And so God, we ask you to guide us, to protect us, and to provide for us even now. We pray our strength, oh God. It's in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ that we do pray. Amen, amen. and amen. Well, at this time, we have acknowledgments, um, and I don't know if there are any um, any ministers or pastors in the house who want to give honor to that at this point. Okay, if there's not, then we're going to move on to the next part of the obituary. Uh, that's the reading of the obituary. And let us silently read it. Marquel, 
and also known as Leroy, right? Am I right? Yeah. <laughs> um, what a rich heritage to have such a, a large family. And along with family comes friends. And so even right now, um, we have an opportunity for remarks. Um, and the family would like for a few to share. Uh, we would prefer if you want to come and share a story about Leroy or just share your heart right now. This is a great time to do it uh, before we move on into the program. Um, and again, when you come, let's, you know, let's be reverent and make it brief. Um, so and at, this, at this time, would anyone like to come up and share? All right, come on up, young man. <clears throat> Leroy means so much to our family from the beginning to the end. We watched him grow up, we raised him, and he raised us. He was our best friend. Yeah. He was everything that we would always want to be as we grew up as kids. We had so many, just so many experiences, you know, being born into our massive family, you know, as y'all see. It's just so many lights, you know, so many memories. Leroy was a war. He was fierce. He mm -hmm. fought. And he continued to fight, you know, dealing with everything he had to deal with growing up, you know, as he got older, fighting for his brothers, fighting for his sisters, his aunties and his uncles. He will always be remembered forever in this life to the day that we come to meet him again. We love you, Leroy. Beautiful. Else? Don't be shy. You don't want to have left and said, I wish I had have said something. I'm giving you a few more seconds to come up and share. We love it. We love it. Amen. And let us know who you are. <coughs> I'm Lydia um, Jenkins. I'm in my car for um, about five years. Mm. More than five years. Okay. Um, I was his girlfriend. troubles, I had my troubles, but we stuck together, we made each other day. Thank you for that, Lydia. Amen. Okay, well, we'll continue on. My cousin has given me instructions. Joan, she told me two minutes <laughs> for the entire service. So I have already, I'm in the doghouse now. So, <laughs> All right, so as we move forward, um, we have a selection by Junior Jackson. Junior, are you here? Thank you, Junior.
<clears throat> as soon as I stop worrying, worrying how the story ends, when I let go and I let God, I let God have His way. And that's when things start happening. When I stop looking at back then, I let go and I let God. I let God have His way. And that's when things start happening. I stop looking at back then when I let go and I let God. in our lives for days to come. And so, God, we glorify your name. Thank you, God. I pray, Lord, that this message will provide what you desire for it to provide for each of us, oh God. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, I am sure as Deidre on that day, on Thanksgiving Day of 1992, I'm sure Deidre looked on the face of Leroy that day, and she was most grateful to God for the birth of her firstborn son. She knew that she would have to repeat the stories and carry out the instructions that were told to her by her mother, Joan, that Joan was also given instructions that needed to be told by her mother, Margaret. And then Margaret received instructions by her mother, Wilhelmina, that needed to be carried on by her mother, Minnie. The importance and the effect of family, carrying out tradition by tradition by tradition, strengthens us all. It provides the opportunity that we never lose hope and we never move from the foundation that we were birthed from. Because that foundation reminds us of the faith that it took to bring us to where we are now. We are here by faith. We are here by those who survived. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for those who had to survive. Also, I don't take away from Curtis's family and what Curtis and his family brings to the table and brought to the table for Marquill. Leroy was not only born on the most celebrated holidays of the year, but as time would tell, by 
by his nature, he was thankful for his family. He showed his allegiance and loyalty by always being there. Right, Polly? Mm -hmm. Always being there. No matter what the occasion and no matter what it took to be there, he would show up. <clears throat> now, many times when I do a funeral, I always look at the generation that that person was born in. Um, in Leroy's generation, he is, his generation is coined as, and many of you here are, coined as the millennials. So that, that would be those born from 1980 to 1996. Now, contrary to what has been said about this generation, let me tell you about this generation. They are exceptionally generous. Now, I know sometimes we hear all they just, all they care about is themselves. They just want what they want. But I can tell you, this generation is exceptionally generous. And they hold the great promise for improving the issues in our world system. And you all have been the marchers. You all have been the protesters. So Marquel Leroy showed that trait through his love and care of others. You can sense that he and his siblings were empowered with a greater sense of care after the passing of their mother, Deidre. Learning the value of strong community within the family unit. Leroy learned from Deidre that laughter was important. So he often joked around, as you all said, with the gift of making, and Polly told me this, making funny noises with his mouth. Is that right? <laughs> So God knew the beginning of Leroy and ending of Leroy's life on the, and the days here on this earth. He also prepared and created him in such a way that his earthly assignment and his transition into the eternity would grab our attention and have an impact on all of our lives, even today have an impact on all of our hearts. This is a day of reflection and the pain of his loss and presence at this time seems unbearable and right in the midst of the struggle, I just have to tell you, right in the midst of the pain, right in the midst of the loneliness, you guys, there is hope. There really is hope. In this shepherd song, this is a familiar scripture, and it's known all over the world, and is known and loved by children that learned it before they even learned how to read. Children learn this song. It's also a song that has been, been reportedly on the lips of those elderly who have passed on. Right before they passed on, they were quoting the 23rd Psalm. The words are beautiful and they're easy to remember. The most important fact is that it expresses trust in God as the one who is with us in all of life's experiences, restoring us when we go wrong, guiding us and providing us, or providing for us, watching over us, in the dark places of life. Near us from the day that we were born until the day that we pass. I can tell you, the Lord our shepherd was lead with Leroy when he transitioned. He was not alone because scripture tells us, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake. There are three areas that I would like to point out in the psalm for our strength and comfort today, and then I'll get out of the way because my two minutes are almost done. <laughs> Verses 1 and 2 
deals with the issue of him being a shepherd. The background of the person who wrote this, which is David, the psalmist, wrote a lot of the psalms. His background was that he was a shepherd. Before he was called, appointed, and anointed to lead the children, to lead the great people of God, of Israel, into the promised land, he was a little shepherd boy. So as he wrote this, he was able to share and express <coughs> this great song and how the Lord, he sees the Lord in his life. He uses the shepherd in this passage as he understands the nature and the responsibility of what a true shepherd does. The first thing they do, a shepherd has to be with their sheep day and night, leading them in the daytime to good grass to eat and to places where they would have to drink water. For as you look at sheep and you study sheep, there are only two things that they need, and that's food and water. That's all they needed. But a shepherd might have to defend them from the attacks of a wild and the wild beast. God is often spoken of, or is often spoken of, of, as a good shepherd. He's often spoken of as the great shepherd and as the true shepherd. But here the psalmist says very plainly that the Lord is my shepherd. He makes it personal. And I can tell you today, that God is your God. That God is your Father. He doesn't create grandchildren. He, his relationship with you is not a grandchild. That's what I mean when I say create. I mean he doesn't have a relationship as a grandchild to you. He doesn't have a relationship as an uncle to you. He has a relationship as a father to you. There is a direct relationship with you that you don't need to go through someone else to get God's attention, to hear God's voice, to have a conversation with him. You can go directly to God. You can go directly to God in whatever state that you're in. God is not offended by where we are, what we just said. If I just finished saying something that didn't sound right, that was not good words, I can in the next breath still come to God. He still hears me. He understands our humanness, our frailties, our weaknesses as people. Number two, the second thing is he is our guide. As a guide, the scripture tells us, that his rod and his staff, they comfort me. The rod was used to protect sheep from the attacks of wild beasts and wild animals. And the staff had a crook, crook on the end of it. And it was used to pull the sheep back into the pasture, to the place of blessing, to the place of security, of protection. The restoration process for righteousness and for his name's sake, the word tells us that his rod and his staff, they comfort me. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. You know, Joan, I was thinking about the young family. And you guys, if we when we were coming up, if we went anywhere and discredit and disgraced the name of the young family, I can tell you, not only did we hear it from our parents, but we heard it from our uncles and our aunties and our elder cousins. Everyone would have something to say about it because we were disgracing the name of the young family. And here is an example 
we were an example of what that looked like. That God will protect his name that's placed upon our forehead in our lives. As children of God, and as we come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, he will provide the perimeters and the guidance and the protection that we need to stay in a safe zone. Through the valley of the shadow of death, also known as dark valley, trials, troubles, and sorrows, seem to us dark and dreary, but God will bring us through it. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. The dread of what might happen, and many times our problems and our troubles are what might happen. Not what actually happens, but we fear what might happen. The enemy gets us caught up in what might happen. But as we continue to have that talk with God, that it will soon disappear. The problems, the worry, the weight and the heaviness of what might happen begins to lift. Having that conversation with the good shepherd. And then the last one is as host. He is a good host. Have you ever been to anyone's home and they invited you over for a meal and when you got there, you were absolutely surprised how they laid it out. They laid it out beyond your expectations. And that's what God does for us. He says, as a good host, God will provide and prepare a table that is set with the nourishing elements that we need to survive the nourishment of peace, the nourishment of power, of health, of wholeness and even forgiveness. He is anointing us for the journey with his precious Holy Spirit and gives us an overflowing cup of that blessing. And then the last part of this scripture, he says, I will remain in the house of the Lord forever. And you know, guys, COVID has taught <laughs> us that we don't have to remain in the church building to be the house of the Lord. When we are worshiping at home through the internet, however we are now having to worship because of COVID, we are reminded even more that we are the house of the Lord. We are the church. We are. And so as we open, continue to open our hearts and allow God to have free reign in our lives. We can also say what the psalmist says, I will remain the house of the Lord forever and ever. And so as we celebrate the beautiful soul of Marquel, we see his victories and his accomplishments live out through this journey in the scripture. We discern even the approach of his life as he transitioned, not alone. The good shepherd was with him. So we are reminded even now to reflect on that passage, to reflect on the Lord Jesus Christ as being our good shepherd. Amen. As I come to a close, or I have closed, let us pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you, O oh God, O oh God, O oh God. Thank you for this time together. We ask, Lord God, that you would continue to strengthen, to comfort, to provide, to give peace, and to give joy, Lord. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. Thank you, oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So at this time, we are on our way to the, the burial place. Those who 
will not be going with us. God's peace be with you. God be with you and your families and strengthen you. And the family has asked that after the, the continual of all the services, that the repast will only be made available for the immediate, immediate family due to COVID. God bless you all and God keep you.